Hello, folks. It's George Leoniak, and welcome to New Geometry. I'm super excited about this video. Today, we are going to be circling back around to a series of videos I did about the Earth grid, the planetary grid. And uh, this past week, I made the spherical 31 great circle model based on the icosi dodecahedron. And in this video, I'm going to show you how the simple techniques of sacred geometry were used to completely construct this model, really with no mathematics at all. It's all based on sacred geometry temp templates that uh, you may not be too familiar with because they're really of a new variety, K and EW, where we take the old templates and we add the golden ratio circles to many of those templates. And that is what gave me all the information that I needed contained within that to create this amazing model that represents our Earth grid. And before we jump into the screen share, I've got a bunch of models around me, which you'll see pictures of in the slideshow. Um, but I just want to return to this one up close because last year my interest stemmed around creating a, what is a 61 great circle uh, model, but it's not the great circles, but it was based on a lot of research on the earth grid and working with forms. I called this model the geohedron at the time. So you're going to see a little bit about this form in the beginning and how it kind of circled back around to that. So let's jump into sharing the screen and just let's do a little bit of a overview of some of the research that's been done on the earth grid and uh, there's a few books out there on it and researchers like Buckminster Fuller and Becker Hagens creating the uh, UVG grid and this grid here was one of the first images of Russian scientists who mapped the spherical icosahedron layout providing these different vertices on the earth's surface uh, that there are 62 of these vertices. And there's been a few other models of with either a cube octahedron where the earth is laid out, the surface of the earth is completely fitting within this, squares and triangles, even an icosahedral version and the rhombic dodecahedral version. Now, these are all flat, you know, faced polyhedron models with the printing of the earth on top of it. And if, you know, for many people, feel that the earth is a sphere, um, not all people out there, uh, but many do. So uh, when we get into the spherical models, we start to talk about how those polyhedron relate to these vertices, creating the sphere or circle that is within those polyhedra. And one of the first ones that I came across was the 31 great circles, first identified by Buckminster Fuller, where he took um, the icosi dodecahedron, we're gonna hear a lot about this Archimedean solid today, and he used uh, six of the great circles, which were these decagon hoops, which we'll talk about, the de decagon circles. He used two other forms to get the 15 circles, the distascus tricontahedron, and the dodeca dodecahedron, these 10 great circles. He put these forms together to get the vertices that would be in contact with the surface of the sphere. Although for this one here, really just the icosahedron is really the primary one that are in the vertices that are touching. And the remainder of these are given by the other forms, including these points. So um, when I first came across this form, I was like, wow, I don't know if I'll ever be able to figure out how to construct it because you know, I, I could figure out the icosi dodecahedron. I have drawn both these other ones at this point, but how you combine them all together to get the 31 great circles and do it in a three-dimensional model was just beyond me. And books like you know, Spherical Models by Magnus Weninger were just kind of like, I don't think I'll probably ever be doing that. But sacred geometry leads you on the path and creates another story. And it's been a whole year of research that I've been working on this really here and there mixing into all the other threads of new geometry that I'm following. Um, but my first videos talked about these hoops that I drew out rather roughly here showing where they are. And uh, 
what I found was you could do it all in these previous videos with the 31 great circles, that is, with a distachus triconctahedron, which is this one, but biscribed. And I have a whole video on biscribed forms, which basically means that all the points of that form are in contact with this surface of a sphere. So some have to be raised up, some have to be lowered. They all come into harmony because here only certain points are in contact with the sphere, not all of them. So that was sort of my initial understanding. And, and I just pretty much got did a, didn't really follow trying to work with the dodeca dodecahedron or the distachus triconctahedron early on. I was primarily like, look, I know that this do icosi dodecahedron is definitely in this. And really all that needed to happen was the uh, water or the icosahedron had to provide these vertices on the sphere. So it had to be enlarged a little bit. And the dodecahedron also had to touch the surface of the sphere. So I combined all those together and that gave me the 30 vertices, I mean the uh, 32, excuse me, uh, 62 vertices on the surface of the earth um, that, you know, created these energetic grid lines that surround the earth in a, a icosahedral symmetry with dodecagon faces and triangular faces and so, so on and so forth. So um, I still had to work with, uh, you know, the underlying platonic solids, which are going to be in there. And uh, we're going to switch that up in just a moment. And, and but I just want to show how this came to completion. You can check out those other videos, which this video will be in that whole uh, uh, playlist of Earth Grid videos. But I came up uh, eventually with uh, 81 great circles, 122 vertices on this form, 240 faces. I call this the geohedron. Very, very cool form. But the circle pattern, you know, after building this form, I was like, hmm, 81 great circles seems like a lot to take on, especially when not all of them are meeting up. I just know what it was like to uh, wedge in a lot of those little pieces. Um, so, but this is, you know, it fit the model, it fit over the earth, and I could put it over top of the system, this is the drawing, it's over the planetary grid system there, and it, uh, it all worked out. But, you know, I started working with the, uh, recently in my last video, really thinking about the Icosi dodecahedron, and it dawned on me um, that it contained both hexagon, decagon, and squares within it. So we're going to switch to that slide in a second. But let's just talk about this amazing form, the Icosi dodecahedron, for a moment, because it is a form that is um, created either through, well, it's created in a lot of ways, but traditionally thought of truncating an icosahedron, which will be removing these icosahedron blue caps. And if you truncate it at the midpoint along that edge, if you do that on every point on the icosahedron, that will create this shape over here. 32 faces, 30 vertices, 60 edges. And you can equally do it with the dual form of the icosahedron, your dodecahedron over here, truncate at the midpoint edge, and you create these little pentagons and the red pentagons. Same form over here. Okay. So that's a little background on the Icosi dodecahedron. And as I was contemplating this form, I was like, well, the Icosi dodecahedron is basically a compound of five octahedra. I should have put that drawing in here, but the vertices are given from five octahedron, which are in the uh, inside the form, five octahedra. Remember the octahedra is the platonic solid that is six vertices around it. So if we have five in there, that would give us 30 vertices. So this is just rotated around in icosahedral or five-fold symmetry dun, 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 five times. And then that gives us the uh, icosahedron, icosahedodecahedron vertices. So if we look at this, it's really got squares. In each of these um, octahedron, there are three squares. There's a uh, the one we're looking at now. There's the one coming towards you. And there's the one horizontally along the midline. Uh, so we have uh, we have 15 squares then that make up the icosi dodecahedron, and it also has 10 hexagons 
regular hexagons based on one, two, three, four, five, six, right there from this view, you get the 10 hexagons. And we already know that it has the decagons because following these edges around will provide the six um, decagons that are of the icosid dodecahedron and actually make the form. So I was like, wait a second, 15, 10, and six. Well, hey, that's 31 great circles right there in the icosid dodecahedron. We didn't really, I didn't really need to do this method um, that I showed previously, which was, you know, creating a icosahedron that's a little larger, dodecahedron a little smaller, getting those all into balance, which was definitely a tricky thing to do in sacred geometry. It wasn't smooth flowing. Um, it worked, uh, and it definitely was not this 31 great circle model of the Dystachus tricontahedron, the dodecahedron, and the icosid dodecahedron. That was uh, a lot more complicated than, hey, it's all the icosid dodecahedron, really. And the crossing, as you'll see in a moment, of these hoops, all 31 of them, are going to create naturally the intersection points of the other vertices within the earth grid. So as they just naturally cross within this, they're going to cross at those intersection points and create vertices, which could be icosahedron and dodecahedron, you know, the other forms. So they could be the dodecahedron, dodeca dodecahedron, or the Buckminster Fuller's, you know, the stack is triconhedron, whatever they want to be, you can make them those. But really, it just got so simplified to it's the icosid dodecahedron. Now, I had this compound of six icosid dodecahedron. That was my previous video out there called New Forms from the Golden Sea. You can check that out. That's really what got the ball rolling, I guess, the spear rolling in this direction. So, uh, Okay, now I want to show you how this was done with sacred geometry. Now, Magnus Weninger, he calls the form that I'm showing you to my left in here, the 31 great circles of the icosid dodecahedron. He doesn't mention anything about Buckminster Fuller in this book at all. He's not even in the table of, of the uh, references in the back. And it was written after much of Buckminster Fuller's work. He doesn't mention anything about the, bis the dodecus, uh, dystachus triconahedron or the dodeca dodeca in there. He just said, hey, look, it's just six uh, icosi, it's, it's 31 great circles of the icosi dodecahedron. So after I did my little mental experiment, I finally found that in there and I was like, okay, sacred geometry is going to show me how to make this because. Magnus Weninger it shows me a lot of things I don't understand. What, I mean, I understand a little bit, but you know, it, I, you have to create all based on mathematical measurements to lay out your arcs here. This is just a, any one in here, but they're all like that, pretty much the same. You're laying out your arcs and you have to measure everything out. Well, I could do that all with scale and variance phi ratio. Now, this is where our golden circle templates. Now, these are the same templates that I've been sharing with you for over a year now, building more understanding of them. They keep communicating, learning more from them. They're revealing themselves, and they reveal that the earth grid is within these three templates with golden ratio circles. And that's the key thing I've been saying for a while. And they're gonna create a golden bridge, a golden arc of the segments and all the intersection points that we need along those. All we have to do is base our circle, the black circle here, has to be the same circle for each of the drawings, right? Now I can do this without drawing the Icosi dodecahedron in here at all, which is the easiest way to do it. I'm gonna show you that in a moment, but this is really just a vision of the circle into these segments and it's given in the golden circle templates, okay? So this one over here, the square 90 degree segment here will from square view, this is going to provide all your octahedron, all the um, squares that the, the fifteen squares within this within the build of the model. And I'll show in a closer image how these were created, but they're radiating lines out from the center. Same thing here, the sixty degree segment, the hexagon segment here is just one little segment here 
that has the darker lines are the main intersection points of the hexagon. This is going to interact with the other, the lighter, thinner lines going to interact with the other rings that are hooping around. Then we have the final little piece here of the decagon. So it makes a nice bridge, nice golden bridge, little rainbow from one side to the other. It's a pot of gold on either end. So we are going to um, check out a little bit more up close now the building of each of the models. Because before I built the big model here with all 31 great circles, I did build, and I'm not going to pull them out now because I'll be fidgeting around too much, but I'm completely surrounded with spheres around me here, big spheres on either side and below me. <laughs> um, so we've got, uh, this is how it was laid out in the 10 great circles based on the hexagons. And what we need to do here is basically it's in the golden circle template, which I've shown how to draw. We get these golden ratio circles and other videos. I mean, pretty much every video that I've done talks about this method and the, the, at least for the past year because um, we really want to get this segment and it's right here when this hexagon comes down and intersects this spot we just send our arc our line up to hit our circle and that provided um, this segment that I needed and I just put another segment uh, ring out here you know another hoop around it to just get the width so it wasn't just a thin line that I was working with so that was easy to do. And I was like, well, this is the same thing that I've been drawing the dodecahedron with and the icosahedron, all the corrected forms that I've been talking about in Metatron's cube, they will never allow you to build the earth grid. This is uh, the technique that you have to have a template that has the golden ratio to even be coming close to constructing this. So all the things I've been discussing about, you know, the correction in sacred geometry of getting these phi ratio forms, particularly the dodecahedron and icosahedron integrated into the pattern language of sacred geometry has become foundational and pivotal. And this is a true example and expression of why that is true. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. This is just a regular uh, decagon view. You know, we do this with the golden circles and I use the same technique of getting these golden circles that I did for the golden seed of life here. Basically, these are all really golden circle seeds of life, all of them, and I'll talk about that in just a bit. But all I need for this segment is um, right here, it's already just part of the decagon hoop that goes around. It's just given in the circle pattern, nothing intersecting the line. The line is right there. It doesn't go through it like it did on this other one where it has to go through and hit the edge of the circle like so. Um, now, this one was really the most interesting one for me because um, it was, how is this going to happen in the square view? There's a lot of intersection points with the other components of the rings that are going to be for the squares or the octahedra that are in there. They're going to cross a lot of the other um, hoops. This is it just by itself. So this is Brilliant's logo of this you probably might even see an ad for Brilliant on this video or other videos of mine. They put a little ad and then you look at their logo. Uh, this is the Distachis tricontahedra. That's their logo. It's just in the spherical version of it. So that Distachis tricontahedron was what I was talking about with Buckminster Fuller. But it's actually just the icosidodecahedron hoops that make it. That's what the main thing I'm saying about this. It's all about the icosidodecahedron here. It's the 15 great circles of this icosidodecahedron. Now, I was saying this was quite interesting because I just took a leap of faith here to be like, I hope that this segmentation along this edge of the circle here is just given to me in the golden circles because I laid out the golden circles like I do in square view. And I just drew out the lines to intersection points along there. And then I was amazed how this all lined up for it to fit perfectly to intersect every little cross section piece that it has to go. Over. You'll see that in the final form when I have photographs of that. So, okay, I have more about how that played out. There's a couple, uh, we're going to revisit some of these slides in just a bit, but let's just take a look at all three of them together, together, the three models. Now, all three of these now have to be combined into one uh, 
model of the 31 great circles. So over here to the bottom left, this is the, um, the hexagon. This is the 10 hoops in this one. And if you study these closely, this one has two of each color. So there's five of each. Um, I mean, there's, there's five set, or excuse me, two sets of five um, within this. So you could follow out the hoops within this. This one's ringing around in there. I did all these hoops corresponding to colors. Here is the, um, the 15 hoops there of the squares. So this is like an octahedron, this blue one. You can see it's crossing right here in the middle. And every time these are going to cross, here's another crossing section. You can see it's making a rhombic face. It's the rhombic tricontahedra face, so similar to a rhombic tricontahedron and curve. But it's this biscribe distachis tricontahedron. Basically, that's what it is. It's the biscribe distachis tricontahedron. And this one here is circling around uh, the icosidodecahedron. This has got the six decagon hoops. And that one was just the classic icosidodecahedron version. All right, next up, we've got, uh, basically, I'm going to just go a little bit more into detail before I show you the unified version, because I want to look a little closer at the three golden temples, the three golden templates uh, that contain the form based on the phi ratios, right? So we, I want to show you a little bit more about basically how these edges and faces that we're looking at of the actual icosidodecahedron now, but because before what I was showing you was, you know, basically um, just cutting out the template. We, we, you didn't have to put the icosidodecahedron in this at all. I just needed those points. But now I'm going to show you how the icosidodecahedron is the in embedded in the drawing itself, which is unique. It's the, the C circle templates. What I'm saying here is they're more than just cutting out pieces to make the form. They hold the form themselves and they show all the true relationships and dimensions that you need to make the form. The form is in these templates. Okay. So here they are all, you know, without all the circle templates there. Here's the icosidodecahedron. Here's the blue square. So that's the 15 squares that we get in there. Here's the 10 hexagons, the blue hexagon within the icosidodecahedron. And of course, the decagon, it's just already the outline of the form there. All right, so let's take a close look at the top three here. And we're going to zoom in on each of them. So the first one we'll take a look at is the golden circle seed of life, as I've called it, the six circles around one are actually here. It's uh, We've got uh, 14 circles laid out. And what I'm showing here is this pentagon face, the edges of this are in phi proportion to a flat pentagon. And I'm showing that these red lines that are radiating out from the center of our drawing, they give us the correct place where these edges, these, these pentagon that's going to be made here, which on the form is this red pentagon, it's going to have to cross the pentagon edge. It's coming across here, and it needs to intersect that. And that's a phi proportion right there that it's coming across where the red star is, right? So it, we need to get that point, those two points. Well, our awesome golden circle seed of life does that for us beautifully because all we have to do, and it's, it's over to the side too, but I showed it right on the star. Um, we just do a five-pointed star within that and we zip our lines up and we even get the midpoint because we'll need that for the crossing octahedron or the square, square hoops that are going to intersect it. So we just laid that out and there it is. So here it would be flat and there's the two points that are on there. This is pretty much just like tilt that pentagon over, this is what we'd be looking at. And this is what the golden circle seed of life does. It transposes all our pentagonal geometry as a true uh, orthographic projection that is going to maintain its um, uh, measurements from here to here. And that's allowing me to build this basically with none of the mathematics that Wegner gives me, the only thing I do have to do is just have the same size circle. And of course, the precision of this drawing 
app that I'm using help uh, significantly, but I could do this all hand drawn and so could you. And that's the beauty that you can construct this earth grid just with the hand drawn ancient techniques of compass and straight edge and come up with the same model it might be a little rougher around the edges, um, but you'll be able to do it just with sacred geometry to create the 31 great circles of the, the uh, earth grid. And that's just what sacred geometry has to offer us. It uh, is a, a, a pattern of la language for everyone that you don't have to be an advanced mathematics professor to do these sort of things. Um, the golden circle seed of life here, I'm calling this also in the Decagon view because I don't know what else to call it. They're really all the seed of life in a way. I mean, I know the seed of life is the iconic six around one circle in the middle, but it's really just looking at it from another view. So um, the circles are just using different circle pattern to pick up the different points. Um, but this one is rather easy because, you know, we know where our edges are in here. We, just need to connect those lines around here. And these are the only three points we needed on that Pentagon edge, all right? So those are the points there. And this is the one that I really um, brought home to me just how amazing the golden circle seed of life is um, and even in square view, because remember these lines will connect all the way up to you know, the intersection points of the golden circle. So we need these 90 degree edge here. We need these going through. And this was just pure magic to me because I, like I said, I took a leap of faith hoping that these would intersect these points because this Pentagon face on this form right now is flat to us, right? I knew that it's flat. So if we're looking at it like it is in the drawing there, we're looking at it like this. And this is the upper vertice. This is flat. So it's if I'm going from the top of that point straight down, I know as I go along, I've got to hit this star in the middle of that. And magically, just by sending these lines out, I go from the top, I'm hitting the next point where the cross part of the star is. Well, thankfully, that was right there. The midpoint was also given right there the bottom of the Pentagon, oh, well, that was given right there. And then now I've got to deal with the triangle that's, you know, now also sloping down in a way over here, right? So I have the, the sloping triangle, which is also flat to me because they're following, the lighting is a little tough, so that's following this edge. And then that bent, the triangle bends there. Well, I got to continue that trajectory. And luckily, well, I've got the edge of the triangle, that's given, right? So that was right there. And now I need the center of the triangle. Well, what do you know? It is also connected to that golden circle and that's the center of the triangle. So bam, there's a center of triangle. You go here, there, there, center point is defined. It's actually the golden circles allowed me to get that whole arc of 90 degree and pick up every single point that was necessary along the golden, along that uh, edge of that circle and along the faces of the Icosi dodecahedron. Now, without the template doing that for me, I was really gonna be scratching my head how to do it. I was probably gonna have to consult spherical models book and figure out some measurements and everything like that. But I was like, what a gift the golden circles gave. So next up, get all the circles, print them out. I got 31 great sheets of paper all stacked up that are, going to soon be the great circles. Um, and uh, lots and lots of cutting took place, lots of cutting in an arc. I'm sure Michael Evans, I don't know if he'll watch this one, but he'll be happy that I'm doing all that curved geometry. And, uh, you know, no straight lines in nature. Well, we, now we're creating this sphere. And here I go. It's like the first star just came together beautifully. I mean, there's little you know, a little warping with some of the pieces because they're running into other pieces, which they're supposed to be just going right through. And I have to use very little tape. I basically spliced it together. So I cut one knot on the top and one on the bottom at these intersection pieces and just slid them together. So it was really well constructed. There's only a taping in just a few little pieces. The rest is just all wedged together and all the pieces fit in. So it created this awesome star within a star piece. The yellow in this is going to be our squares, the red are the hexagon hoops that are going through, and the blue is the icosi dodecahedron layout. 
I found a new use for a basketball because, you know, I needed more hands. So Wilson came out to help me out. Just like, <laughs> I think there was a movie a long time about Wilson and the fellow on the stranded island. Well, I had Wilson here to help me out and I'm wearing a little hat in the video. Um, and I found other creative ways to, uh, you know, position the form around and work with uh, the use of props. Um, but here it is, the 31 great circles, it's all based on the 30 verses of the Icasi dodecahedron, pretty much after a day and a half of, you know, cutting and eating occasionally, I would uh, piece this together and we have the decagon view straight down in there. Beautiful how it captures the opposing star and the central pentagon of this one goes with the other one. I mean, magically the distances all kind of nest each other in the, the way we view it, you know? Um, but like I just said, um, just so you could follow it out again, this is the decagons. The red is the uh, hexagons and the yellow are going to be your uh, squares. Now, you can think of those kind of like we have actually created the vertices as well of the icosahedron and the dodecahedron in there. And the two are compounding, creating rhombic tricontahedron faces. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But let's just take a look at the form from the various different views that I like to show things from uh, the Pentagon view here. We have our square view coming up next. Um, so this is where the octahedron, the central one that's facing you, straight up and left and right. And they're... We'll also show this hoop. You can't see it really because there's a lot of other ones going all the way around. That's one octahedron that you're looking at. It. And of course, if it were a square, it would go through like here. But we picked up those vertices magically to get all those intersection points along there. And I have to tell you the gratification and the excitement that happened when you're building this model and all of a sudden you're getting to the point where I'm going to close it up on the other side and Will it fit? Will it all be like a smush jam thing? Will it all will it not come together? And what a great day it was when it just came right together and met nose to nose at these final blue to blue intersections of the Icasi dodecahedron and the red stars fit right in there. And then the other pieces just went right in too. So really, really fascinating and amazing. Um, and here it is from the uh, hexagon view. So this is all about the red intersections. And this is creating the icosi dodecahedron with the blue. This is uh, the pentagon faces. This is as if you're drawing it from the normal six around one golden circle seed of life, okay? So basically we've took our straight line geometry of the underlying forms here, and we've turned them into these spherical representations, which is, you know, what our earth is. And we have these internal geometries which may provide the vertices, which actually may not even have to be forms as I'm discovering. They could just be these um, knowledge, basically. In my previous video, I talked about the knowledge, which is basically a form that has really no volume in it, but it's just hexagonal, um, hex this is 10 hexagons that just form a central vertice and the outer vertices. and any radiating points out could be just about anywhere on it, but we have 30 vertices. This creates the icosi dodecahedron in a knowledge form. This is what got me thinking about doing this really was creation of this awesome form here. So this is what happens when the three become one and we take all of our hoops. Here we are again on the left, we've got the uh, 15 hoops over here based on the squares, six scoops on the decagons. And the last one here is the hexagons, this 10, um, 10 hoops of the hexagons, add them all together and we get the 31 all together in the middle here. Just a phenomenal uh, geometric expression that brings together just about everything I've explored in sacred geometry and had to utilize all the tools and all the techniques of doing all these drawings to basically come up with the complete template of how to do it based on uh, the templates that I've shown you. It's all right there in the templates all along.
Um, okay, so I want to revisit the planetary grid by Becker and Hag Becker Hagens because I woke up this morning and I was like, boy, it would really be awesome because I know that the icosi dodecahedron is inside the rhombic tricontahedron. Now, the rhombic tricontahedron is uh, this little form here. Oh, the red one I wanted to show you over there, but I don't, I'm not going to get it. Um, but in here at the center point, remember this, I'm going to show you in a minute, but Ocasi dodecahedron is right here at the center point. There's 30 faces on here. Let's look at it this way. The dual form of the 30 faces on here is the Ocasi dodecahedron. So at the center point of each diamond face on here would be an Ocasi dodecahedron vertice. So basically that's what this is showing us right here. There's a sphere within this rhombic tricontahedron which is the earth grid, which is the earth, which is the rhombic, uh, excuse me, which is the icosi dodecahedron right here. Those are the 30 vertices that are in contact with this. So there's just been a little confusion about, well, what is the earth star? What is the, is it, is it mapped out on the surface of these, you know, diamond, golden diamonds that are here? It's actually the sphere. This whole sphere is inside there. So. Let's take a closer look. Well, yes, that sphere is the Earth. I already got to the punchline here. Inside this rhombic tricontahedron, we're just showing you a lot, a little bit closer look, is the sphere. That's in contact. That's this form right here. That's what's going to create all the vertices. All the hoops that are in there are from those 30 vertices. You really only need 30 vertices to do it. And that's, uh, even though it's going to create those 62 vertices and other cross points, which could also be vertices along there, but the 62 are the main ones, but it's really stemming from those 30. Here it is down here. And the printed up projections of these are on this. And for a while, I didn't understand, well, is the sphere around that? Is it over it? Like, it just didn't make sense. But now it totally makes sense that this it's kind of a misrepresentation, even though it looks cool to print out the Earth on this. Really, the Earth should be a little ball inside this, right? That is our globe. Take a globe and build a rhombic tricontahedron around it. And then all of a sudden you have the Earth grid. That's what it is. And here is uh, my lucky day. Uh, after looking at that picture, I was like, hey, this model that I just did, I think it might be pretty close to fitting in a zone tool construction. So I had one in the other room already built. I took out the center piece of it and I put it in. I was like, hey, this is starting to fit. And then I, it was all I had to do was add in the blue dodeca. I can't add the icosahedron because I need the cross point, but that's the compound of those two. Icosa dodeca creates the 32 vertices, 12 and 20 of the two vertices of those two forms to get 32 that holds the, uh, the, the paper model form that I just made right into the tricontahedron. I was just blown away. I mean, totally amazing that no forethought, just a totally unplanned sy synchronicity that just played itself out. I just picked a random, you know, try, basically the reason I picked these size for the form was so I could fit them on the piece of paper. And it just so happened to fit right in the model so I can actually show what the form looks like inside the Earth, inside the, uh, the Earth star. But really the Earth is within this. And these are, you know, this vertice is not in contact. It's really the, it's above it. So that's why I'm saying that these little um, cutouts are a little bit of a misrepresentation. It should almost be like I'm saying, a spherical glass ball with the vertices at the center of these. And those would be the icosahedron and dodecahedron points. And we also know that, that those points are, the other points that are given here are going to be an icosahedron down in here and a dodecahedron over here where they're raised up. They're not in contact, those ones, but they will be on the surface of the sphere. So they have to be kind of shrunken in a little bit in order to be on the sphere itself. Okay, I know that might sound confusing, but let's just take a look at the images. So we've got, uh, we can show you from the square view, just so you can see this is what it looks like. 
um, how it lines up with the zone tool model. Still in awe that I was able to just pop that in there. I mean, it's stable. I mean, it's in there. It's like no wiggle room at all. It's just solidly in there. It's not even crushing the form at all. I mean, just, just slightly, I feel, and I'm a little, <laughs> a little nervous to do it. But, you know, it's just a slight little, I hear little paper creep, you know, kind of making little noises. And I'm like, okay, it fits. It definitely fits, but it's, it's tight. Um, okay, so we've got uh, the hexagon view. And so this is what it looks like from here, right? So we've got uh, the rhombic faces. This is our dodecahedron that we, you know, typically show and drawn. And I guess this is what I'm reiterating. Everything about what I'm showing you is all about seed of life with golden ratio circles, the huge doorway to expanding anyone's relationship to sacred geometry, add golden ratio circles to the seed of life and just let them teach you sacred geometry. That's the, you know, that pretty much that's what will happen because this is how I got led along just to discover this and all the other things that are in it. I think there's way more that can be discovered by many other geometers out there, even if you're new to the subject. Um, okay, so let's go back to the golden circle templates. We've got the rhombic tricontahedron, and I'm just going to go over that one more time so you can see it a little bit more. I'm not going to go over in great detail, but here are the three views, hexagon, square, and decagon. It's giving you these you know, examples of what these forms look like from the three perspectives. Sacred geometry is a lot more than one view of a hexagon view or one view of a square view or the decagon view. Each of these views are providing a different information. And the beauty is all three of those forms had to, all three of those views actually had to be used to come together and they each provided a portion of input to make the form, the 31 great circle form, which is just so cool about the multi-perspectives coming together to be one unified thing squares, hexagons, and decagons, or pentagons, all coming together. Um, so here they are, the rhombic tricontahedron. Remember, it's got 60 edges. It's the dual of the icosi dodecahedron. So basically, those two forms both have 60 edges. You just flip-flop the faces to vertices. So the rhombic tricontahedron, 30 faces, 32 vertices. The icosi dodecahedron, 32 faces, uh, 30 vertices, right? Because they're going to relate to one another. Remember that rhombic, that, excuse me, the Icasi dodecahedron is right in the center. I'll show you more pictures of that in a second. But this is a compound form. It's two of the most amazing platonic solids. I mean, they're all amazing, but remember the, the, the cube is five cubes in this. So this contains the cube. And if you got a cube, you got an, uh, a, a, octahedron and tetrahedrons right here in a dodecahedron. So you've got four of the platonic solids already with the dodeca, just one dodecahedron. And now when we combine that with the icosi dodecahedron, then we get the rhombic tricontahedron here. Um, so once again, dual forms, you know, will work like this. They flip flop all these numbers, except for the edges. The edges are gonna be the same. And you can see the 20 faces icosahedron, the 12 vertices, 12 faces, 20 vertices. Okay, and uh, just once again, it's all in there in these golden circle templates. So I was like, after you know, putting the form inside the tricontahedron this morning, I was like, okay, I got to do these drawings because it's going to look really cool to show the rhombic tricontahedron around the uh, black dotted lines, which are icosi dodecahedron, and just show how easy it is to draw this rhombic tricontahedron you know, it's essentially in the golden circle seed of life as the seed of life itself. It's right here in the decagon view. And I have to use some new techniques to draw those, um, which are all based on golden ratio too. But um, this one here is, uh, you know, just easily at the subdivision of those points along the golden circle, which would be a square around this whole thing. Let's just look up close. You know, there's a lot of circle overlapping lines there. And here I did show in the faces, because remember, this looks like just a rectangle, but in your mind's eye, you have to visualize that as if it's a rhombic face, not just a rectangle, it's sloping away. And that's why the views of the other form help you 
you know, rather than just holding the form in your hand, it's providing another uh, way to relate to sacred geometry. And no doubt, once you draw these forms, you will have a relationship with them. You will see more in the form. If you have not drawn these forms, all the names, all the numbers, everything that's going on here is probably just going to go, you know, not be absorbed to the fullest amount. Drawing sacred geometry and doing sacred geometry and constructing it, doing the whole thing helps build the capacity to make these connections and relationships to retain the names of the forms and develop a real relationship them, with them that are representing our earth, you know, Akasi dodecahedron within our cells and the cube octahedron in our cells is representing us. It's like so much of the pattern language is in the doing of sacred geometry rather than just the knowledge in the books of sacred geometry. It's an applied art form that's meant to unlock many, many layers of your own being through connection with sacred geometry. And it's not the path for everyone, of course, but it is a quite an awesome way to interact and relate with all the forms. But anyway, I don't know. I went on a little, little tangent there. Um, so here is, uh, I was talking about that rectangle face and viewing it from different ones. Basically what I'm saying here now is the blue dots on here are the icosi dodecahedron that are touching, the dotted lines means it's inside there. It's touching the central faces of the rhombic tricontahedron. And I'm showing it from all the different views. And I, you know, I basically just, I should have put the blue dots on these ones too, and these other ones, but it's the same one. I just removed the circles. So this is showing you, you know, here's the hexagon perfectly on the outer edge of the form. So, you know, that's a flat face. These are flat faces because those are perfectly on the circle. And here are the decagons perfectly flat all the way around. So um, last one, I had to add this one in. Another one for, you know, waking up this morning, I was like, I, you know, you got to do something with squaring the circle, the most classic, iconic, you know, spirit and matter are one, one. And the way we typically see this is with our square view, right? So we have the circle perimeter, uh, a circle circumference being uh, the same as the square perimeter. Uh, with a, another diagram is the moon on top with the earth, right? And this is based on phi ratio representation of it. And the Great Pyramid will be in this. So I had a little fun just showing this from three different views to see what it would look like. And um, here is the same size spirit circle. And, the, you know, the spirit and matter, basically the circle representing the spirit and the matter. This diagram shows that the two are the same. The hexagon is a square here now. So the proportions of it don't even touch the circle. And here it pops through the middle, um, but it's not touching the outer end. But I was like, you know, it will give me an opportunity to draw the Great Pyramid which very, very close to the phi ratio dimensions. This is based on Kepler's triangle. Well, here's an octahedron in this view. And I just thought it would look very cool to get another view of the Great Pyramid in a decagon perspective. So it's slightly tilted because this is how the cube is drawn in a, or the square, because this is a square base. So this is the square base or square base that would be the length of this, this is how it look if you just took that cube, where's my little cube? Oh, well, here, I'll have a pyramid right here. If I just took our little square base, right, and just rotated it just a little bit into decagon view, that's the view we're gonna get of that. So I just had a little fun doing that and showing that this is the earth in the spirit and matter are one. It's just no way, whichever way you view this, it's all sacred geometry. And uh, that's all I have. I'm going to stop the uh, screen share. I'm going to show you some of the models and then wrap it up. So let's just take a look at the, um, we'll do it piece by piece here. The Icasi dodecahedron model is just those decagon hoops. Um, it's uh, definitely the most, uh, wiggly of the models. I could have probably tightened it up or used thicker paper to make it a little bit more solid. But you can see there's the, the ring there. And when you do that ring, you'll see a pentagon face because it's from that orientation. 
the um, hexagon version, hexagon 10 rings. This is uh, the Biscribe Distachus tricontahedron, just uh, 10 hexagons. But remember, these are 30 vertices of the icosi dodecahedron, which would be meeting at these points of the star as we go around. See, we're just going to connect the decagon. I mean, the decagon hoops are going to create basically the casing around the star. All right. So that's just a really cool one. That was a really fun one to build. Uh, the square view version, which is the squares, excuse me, this wasn't, this, yes, this is not the biscribe, this is not the uh, biscribe tricontahedron that I mentioned. This is the biscribe tricontahedron. This is the brilliant logo. Um, this is the 15 grade hoops, and in its biscribe form, biscribe form, basically right now, it's essentially doing what the icosi dodecahedron will do. Um, it's just that the icosi dodecahedron, I feel, is just a more basic form connected to the platonic solids, which will create this in, rather than the other way around. That's the way it came to me. Because is to draw this and connect it and do it to sacred geometry like I just showed you um, is going to be a much more complicated drawing to figure out all this geometry. I'd probably have to, like I said, we'll go back to figuring out measurements and mathematical, you know, mathematics to figure out all the lengths. Um, but in the Icasi dodecahedron and the golden circle templates was just uh, easy to do. And then when I combine them all together, just to show the model once again, which is just, a, just magnificent to behold, because it's like, wow, this is the earth grid. I mean, it's a real sphere, you know, I mean, it like, it all came together just beautifully in terms of everything is really in alignment there. A little bit of wiggling in some of the pieces I said, but I probably have to take into account some of the spacing for intersection points. Um, but there it is. Earth grid. 31 great circles of the Icosi dodecahedron. And uh, that's it. I hope you really enjoyed that uh, video. I uh, am very happy to have shared all that with you. And if you're interested in learning to draw sacred geometry and learning more about the golden circles, I have a Patreon that walks people through how to work with the golden circles and drawing the five platonic solids. I'm almost completed with volume one, but all the lessons are already there. That's a real easy way to go. So check that out. That'll be in the description link. I'm uh, doing an apprenticeship now where we're going to actually learn to draw, not just this, but other things from three those three views that I share. We're going to do a lot of drawings that that's an eight week apprenticeship. I'm in a, just starting that one out, but I'll be doing another one in a couple months. And I have a Facebook group called New Geometers, K-N-E-W Geometers. Check that out. That's a great little community that's there, about 2,000 people in there now. So lots of people sharing different things that they're interested in. And I'm always updating it with the videos and other things that I'm working on there. And uh, if you like this video, please subscribe. I'll be back with more exciting things. I'm going to circle back around to the golden C form and uh, talk about the nine-sided polygon that's in there at some point. So um, thanks so much for watching. Much love and appreciation and have a great rest of your day.